Parents, coaches, teachers, guests, student athletes, welcome. Welcome to the All Sports Association Fish Fry. This is our annual fish fry to recognize you, the student athletes. We're excited. Uh, we want to, we're here tonight to recognize your successes on the field and off. We're glad you could be here tonight, but we also want to recognize tonight some of the people that helped you get there, some of the people that helped you achieve your success on and off the field. So thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, we've got a great program. I'm excited about it. Uh, to kick things off tonight, I want to welcome up uh, the commander of the 918th Special Operations Wing out in Hobart, uh, Colonel Jason Grandy, to start us off with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd please rise. Please say our pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome our 2023 president of the All Sports Association, President Gary McCoy. I want to welcome Gary up to introduce us and kick things off. Gary? Hello, everybody. How about that fish? <laughs> the first thing I want to do is thank all of you for being here. I also want to thank the Fish Fry Committee for putting this together. It's a lot of work. Um, and just want to thank everybody for, for being here. I hope you guys have a great time. And also, congratulations to all the scholarships, winners, and all the award winners tonight. Thanks very much. All right. I think a lot of you know who, what we're about, All Sports Association. We're 100 dues paying members. We pay to be part of this club and uh, uh, past presidents as well. And what we do is we support local youth and local sports programs for kids. Uh, so I, I want to say over the, I've got somebody to correct me, I'm sure, but over the last four years, um, our group has raised right out a million dollars or so uh, to, for, to support youth athletics in the local area. We have no paid staff. That's 100% volunteers. Uh, so after expenses, every penny we make goes right back into the important programs that we talked about. So um, I want to also, Echo what uh, Gary just said. That is uh, the fish guys. We got a great crew working out back tonight, working hard, and thank you guys for all the hard work putting that fish together. I want to recognize Buster Sealing. Uh, he and Cisco uh, have donated almost everything you had tonight. Uh, just uh, incredible. Yeah, thanks, Buster. I want to also thank, thank Brian Sparling and his crew uh, for providing the accommodations here at the fairgrounds, and because uh, we couldn't do this without you, brother. Thank you. One thing I felt it was important to start with tonight was uh, recognizing four all sport members who passed away over the last year but gave so much to this organization. I want to recognize those guys tonight. There's uh, William Thomas, our 2012 president, who passed away. Uh, he was very instrumental in getting me involved in a number and giving me opportunities to be involved in this club on a number of different levels. Uh, some of you might remember Charlie McFarland uh, was the honorary all sports member. Uh, who is the, they're calling the father of Special Olympics in Florida. He was, he was the one that brought Special Olympics in and set it up with all, all across the state. Um, so, and then uh, Owen Holston was another one that passed away this year. Uh, he, was, he was a Boys and Girls Club kid, came up through the ranks and uh, is a longtime member of our group and was always out back cooking, uh, making all this happen. And then last, uh, just two weeks ago, uh, we lost Bruce Ravan. Uh, he was our 1995 president, again, a very influential guy, not only for us, but uh, uh, for, on a number of different levels. I, I'm, right now, I'm going to ask if, uh, if I could, is Tanya here? I thought I saw her earlier, Tanya. Uh, please make your way up if you would. Um, Bruce just passed away a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, and Gary, if you would. Uh, but Bruce, if you knew him, he was uh, he umpired for over, he umpired 50 years. He was, uh, he was started locally. I started umpiring uh, with the ACC, did a lot of games with the ACC. He was umpiring over uh, up to 60 games a year. And many of you might remember he made ESPN's not top 10 list when he took a big spill down the first baseline, which we watched on videos over and over and over. Uh, he got to uh, call games in the College World Series twice. He even did uh, some MLB games starting at Finley Park in 1995 during an umpire dispute. So 
Uh, the big thing about Bruce was he was uh, he served on the Boys and Girls uh, Board for many years. He advocated for youth sports throughout the community. Uh, was very outspoken about it, and uh, like William, like Charlie, like Olin, uh, passionate in everything these guys did. So uh, I, we've got a, a small gift tonight that President McCoy will uh, present to uh, Bruce's daughter, Tanya. Re Tanya, Re Tanya, <laughs> and so Tanya. Um, so if you would. Thanks, Lee. <coughs> Uh, Bruce is very important to me. He was the president when I got to be in the club, so a great guy. Um, I want to read the, the plaque. Supporting the youth of, youth of our community for 54 years in honor and recognition of the outstanding commitment and service of Bruce D. Ravan and the All Sports Association and Local Youth Athletics presented February 23rd of 2023. So uh, if you would, just join me in a quick moment of silence. Remember these great leaders, these great men. Although William, Charlie, and Nolan, and Bruce are no longer with us, they will never, ever uh, be forgotten. Let's move on to our program. Our, uh, first of all, I'm curious. I know a lot of people, a lot of schools, uh, kids came out from a far away. I know some of you are geographically challenged from our location, but uh, any underclassmen here, I show of hands. Juniors, sophomores, I think there's a few, there's some back there. Thank you for being out here tonight. I want to hear it from all our seniors that are here tonight. Those, let's hear it. Uh, we got a great turnout. So let me uh, start on behalf of all our members, this great organization that we have. I want to uh, congratulate you on your incredible accomplishments that each of you have done, despite, especially despite the challenges you've had in your high school careers. Uh, it's not been easy. The pandemic is kind of behind us now, but it, we did have some challenges that changed the way we learn, the way we interact with each other, and uh, you're to be commended for uh, your, fighting your way through that and fighting those challenges. I do think we're a big, we're certainly blessed to be part of our community that we live in. Uh, we're proud of our local schools, our city, our county governments, and uh, the state government. Uh, but but uh, tonight, it's uh, the local parents, the teachers, and the coaches that we want to thank most tonight. That's why we're here. So, uh, with that, I want to start um, by just recognizing some uh, special guests that are here tonight. Is uh, Superintendent Chambers in the house? I thought he might be stopping by, but I haven't seen him yet. Uh, um, I want to start. I know we have a, a group over uh, to my left from the University of West Florida. If I could get you guys to rise, uh, I know we have Justin Bennett, Philip Abrair, Jordan Remsen, Cavell Connor, Luca Mello. Uh, I want to point these these folks out for what they do at the University of West Florida. Thanks for being with us tonight. Many of you know. <laughs> Thank you guys. They probably made the longest trip. The. Uh, University of West Florida started their uh, football program just in 2016. Three years later, won the national championship in Division II. Um, I know we have, tomorrow night, we'll be recognizing uh, one of your collegiate players, Dalton Simpler, will be with us uh, for the banquet. Um, and he'll be our male collegiate award winner this year, so we're proud of him. Uh, also, understand that uh, you guys have your first NFL player uh, coming out of that program, the Anthony Bell, who's playing with the Browns now. So congratulations for an incredible program. I didn't see Brian and Kathy yet. Yeah, I did see Kathy earlier. Where are you, Kathy? Brian? There you are. But I'd like to just recognize you. Uh, I, I, obviously, you guys, most of us know the Taylor Hagen Foundation, uh, the trophy they put out. It's a special award in our community. Uh, I know, uh, you know most of you know the story of where Taylor passed away in 2008. Uh, so I'm amazed and, and certainly uh, uh, impressed by how well you've carried his legacy forward. And that legacy is represented by the trophy you guys present every year. Uh, which represents academics, athletics, leadership, community service, and, and Christian faith. So uh, that comes with a motto, don't quit, don't ever give up. I've read through some of your scholarship applications. The, the kids are phenomenal. Uh, so anybody who's been nominated uh, is on another, another level. So thanks for all you do, how you support youth, uh, and how you, we're proud of the values that Taylor uh, represents and proud of this, your board uh, for ensuring his legacy continues to live on. So. Um, this year, I want to also just recognize quickly our uh, uh, this year's Taylor Hopkins Trophy winner. As uh, she hails from Choctaw High School, she over here somewhere. I see a lot of green. So Chi Medina, Chi, please stand up. Please. 
short. Um, I think that was by the pandemic. Uh, cut it short. So sophomore year, she saw a stress fracture. Her junior year, had a hip flexor tendonitis. Um, so that became worse and uh, he had trouble even walking, getting around at that point, I understand. So uh, her mom told her not to lose sight of her relationship with her teammates on, on the uh, track teams. So she kept, she kept continuing to show up all the time, kept times for the teams, did things for the team, supported the team. Uh, her friend Chloe brought a camera taught her how to capture photos, and she became an action photographer for the team, developed a love for action photos, and, uh, and so we're glad to have you here tonight. Thanks for all you do. It says a lot to be a, the winner of that trophy. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> don't quit, don't ever give up. I know a couple other quick uh, people I want to recognize. Female Scholastic Award winner this year for the All Sports Association hails from Navarre. Caitlin Stant, are you here, Caitlin? I think you are. Uh, okay. Well, I'll just tell you quickly, she's cross-country track, captain of her, three time captain of her soccer team. Oh, there she is, Caitlin. I thought there, there you are. <laughs> Caitlin. Caitlin is the All Sports female, female Scholastic Award winner, and uh, we, we will see you tomorrow night. But uh, a 4.9 weighted GPA? Come on. <laughs> Congratulations on your uh, academic and athletic success. Likewise, we have male Scholastic Award winner hails from Choctaw this year. Blake Garland, are you with us, Blake? Oh, he's out of the game. He's out of the game? Okay. So he's not with us tonight, but uh, it was varsity football, baseball, and track. I think he got one B in high school is what I understand. Um, so uh, uh, we will see him tomorrow, t tomorrow night as well, but congratulations. It's a big honor. All right, here's the fun part. This is something we started three years ago. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Fran to come on up, make his way up, and Gary McCoy to make their way up. But uh, this is called our Spirit Award. This is the third annual Spirit Award we put out. This is for all the uh, high schools in our area. Uh, this can go to be awarded to anyone in any activity. Uh, someone exudes their school spirit, and this is an award that's given to us by the school. So we don't have much to do with this other than uh, providing the trophy and presenting it to them. So I want to thank uh, uh, General Fran Hendrick for coordinating this award and making it happen. Um, the intent is to recognize the person in your school uh, with the, the most school spirit. So uh, when they come up here, I think they're expecting you to make some noise for them. Uh, so in no particular order, I'm going to start with our, our local guys. I told them, probably some of these guys walked over here so close, but uh, from Choctaw High School, Angelique Patterson. Next, uh, we have from South Walton Seahawks, 
Uh, I don't think she's here today. Uh, no, Francisco Martin. I don't think. I think we got confirmation that no one's not here. Okay. No. Okay. At a band concert. Um, so next on the list is uh, from Walton High, Lainey Kelly. Lainey, you, you're here. Lainey, I, I met you earlier tonight. Bill Breeze. She's wearing her soccer shirt. Uh, she's doing tonight. Our family, Charlie, Sam, Keith, and Finley. I met all of them just a little earlier. Congratulations, Lainey. From Rocky Bayou Christian School, Isabel Soleil. Solier, Isabel. So she's joined tonight by uh, F the school's FCA coach Rob, Rob Hubs. Rob, you there? Good job, Rob. Uh, and then her family, Mariana, George, Luke, and Luna, over here at the far table. Thanks for being here tonight. You stand over here. We'll just get some music and we'll get a picture. We got a few more to go. So make some room. All right, from uh, Crestview. Again, no particular order. Um, I want to recognize Paige Criddle. Did I say that right? Paige, congratulations. She's going tonight by Sharon Morrow, Dennis Criddle, Thomas Morrow, uh, and her family, uh, her brother and sisters, Savannah, Lane, Justin, and her grandparents, Bob and Penny, I believe, are here as well. Uh, next from Destin High School. This is kind of new for us. Destin High School, Reagan Palmer. Reagan. Where are you, Reagan? Congratulations. Reagan's joined tonight by, uh, by Drew, Jody, and Riley. We're here on the table to my left. So thanks for being here, guys. Congratulations to Destin. They're coming, coming along quickly. We look to see more, uh, more participation down the road, guys. Uh, next, uh, I want to recognize uh, I want to recognize, I don't think Renee is here tonight, but Renee Oliver Harris from Navarre. Sorry, our next Oh, she made it. <laughs> Renee. Sorry. My bad. Welcome up, Renee. I'm very proud of you guys. I had a note that you, that you weren't going to be here. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Um, from Laurel Hill, again, geographically challenged, but making the trip down, Riley Body, Riley, are Riley you here? The big Laurel Hill shirt on, of course. <laughs> big letters. So, uh, Riley's joined today by Robert, Kimberly, and Carly, back in the, in the back back there. Thank you guys for coming. And uh, lastly, our last award uh, is for our Paxton winner, Paxton High School, is Turner Alford. And I understand, I know for sure Turner's on a track meet tonight, so uh, I'm not going to mess up that one. So, um, yeah, we're going to grab a quick picture and continue with the program. So, got a white lens? Yes? Yes, sir. I Alright, we've got a number of other students to recognize this evening. And uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, <laughs> Challenges on guys. Uh, the guys that uh, in the club understand what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, again, I know there's going to be some schools that have good representation tonight, some schools that don't. A lot of that's just geographic based. Uh, but um, I want to start. Let's see. I'm going to start with the uh, the Baker Gators. I know Baker School Gators. Baker, are you back here? I want to hear. I want to hear from the school. Right, there you go. Let me, uh, let me grab this list here and then. Um, what I want to do is first uh, recognize the principal, Michael Martello, athletic director, Matt Brunson. I, I don't know if they're here tonight, but uh, I want to thank you. They, you guys have an incredible program up there academically and athletically. Uh, and I do know, we do have a few folks joining us here tonight. Let me grab that sheet. 
It got updated just minutes ago. I will get better at this, I promise. Here we go. I know Anna Price is with us, so track, track and weightlifting. Anna, if you want to stand up, I'm going to ask you to stand up and we'll give you a round of applause. Hunter, Hunter Allen, football, track and field. Hunter? Barry Gardner, the football coach, is with us tonight, I understand. Barry? And, uh, and Caleb Wagner is joining us. Basketball, football, and track. And I've been... <laughs> Caleb, I've been excited to meet you. As I told you before, I've been waiting to meet you. Uh, thanks for being here tonight, guys. So the Baker School Gators, thanks for being representing. Uh, next, I got the Rocky Bayou Christian Knights. I know they're here in numbers as well. I know that's awesome, you guys over there. A little louder. A little louder. All right, tonight joining us is uh, our, our script award winner we uh, mentioned, Isabella Solier. I got it right this time. Uh, we got Coach Rob, uh, Rob, Rob Hobbs, the FCA coach as well. We also joining us tonight is Elizabeth Pruitt. She's volleyball, soccer, and track. Again, thanks for being here. We're representing South Walton Seahawks. Can I hear you? Scattered a little bit. I want, to, uh, I want to recognize Principal uh, Tibbetts is here tonight. I met her earlier. Coach, Coach Bill Tuzza. Bill, you're here as well, Coach. Oh, okay. I know uh, Alexis Tibbetts are back there. Good to see you again. Uh, Natalie Denton. Natalie here. Natalie's heading over to Valdosta State to play soccer, I understand. Congratulations, Natalie. She's here with her parents, Michael and Lisa, as well. So thanks for, for being here. Congratulations on that. Uh, Emily Bailey. Is that Bolton? Bailey. Bolton. Emily. Joined by uh, her family as well, Jay, Gen 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 Genevieve uh, and uh, Madison. Uh, but she's our scholastic nominee coming from... Uh, coming from the Seahawks South Wall. So thanks for being here tonight, guys. Congratulations. All right, can I hear from Christian High School? All right, uh, under uh, the leadership of athletic uh, director Tim Hatton, uh, we got the male scholastic uh, athlete of the year uh, nominee, Braden Rochemeyer. Met earlier, Paige Criddle. She's uh, she's playing softball on her way to uh, LBW. I know I have it on my notes. We have Marion Hawthorne signing for football. Marion. Roman Brazen signing. For, he's also playing for football. Going to play football. Highlands Community College. Coach Thomas Grant is here tonight, I understand. The back wall, Coach. Appreciate all you do over there. All right. We're going to jump to uh, Fort Walton Beach High School. Go Vikings. Yeah. That's how you doing? Well, I met John Smolski a little earlier. Is John still here? No, he has, no. I know he had an engagement tonight, did he run off to? Uh, athletic Director Holly McDaniel also. Um, I'm gonna think, uh, all right, I'm going to ask you guys, you got a number of people here, so I'm going to ask you to stand up as I call your name and we'll uh, hope applause the end. Mercedes Claybrook. <laughs> Lawrence White. Lara <laughs> Simmons. Shamir Quimby. <laughs> Samir Kov How? Huh. I got it's one of those. Olivia Lincoln, Kenny Ha Higgins, Camlu Jones, and uh, I know we have assistant coach Nick Gardner here. I don't know if he's made it. Yeah. Uh, I want to also recognize I got a few names here: um, Rachel, Rachel Allen and her parents, Go Rachel. Sam Dixon and parents. Tyler, oh well, yeah, a bunch of them. Keep going. <laughs> Lillian Dorman, football, weightlifting. Well, that's Liam, sorry, Liam Dorman. Tyler Jacobson, you already like that, Tyler. Uh, Alain, uh, Alani Enriquez. 
Destiny DeGroote, Kira Sinclair, Caitlin Thomas Thompson, Woo, yeah! Brody Howard, Brody. Tess Alt Tolliver. Tess Tolliver. Yeah. Ava Smith. Yeah. Alex Hall. Yeah. Alex Smith. Tate and Tolliver. Tate and Tolliver. Anna Abernathy. Yeah. Anita Palmer. Yeah. Anna Isham. Yeah. Izzy, Izzy Douglas. Davis, yeah. Pat Morky. All right, I'm out of breath. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your being here. So uh, again, I want to recognize. I know we've uh, she's our spirit award winner, but from Laurel Hill High School, I want to thank you for driving down, Riley Body. Riley, if you stand up. She's us. Volleyball, basketball player up at Laurel Hill. Thank you, Riley. All right, we got uh, from Niceville Eagles. How many Niceville Eagles do we got here in the house tonight? I know we got a few of them. Let's hear it. Eagles! All right, I want to uh, first recognize athletic director uh, Daniel Griffin. Daniel, if you stand up. Oh, he's back in the back. Back there. Thanks for being here tonight. I know Kurt, uh, Christine Cal Caballero and family, her family's here, Christine, oh, Christine, sorry, yeah, that's her. Christine, Christine, I hear you're going to be playing football in Villanova is what I heard, is that correct? Congratulations, sir. I know we have the golf coach, Mitch Ennis, Mitch, uh, there he is, I recognize you, Mitch, and his wife is joining us tonight, thank you. Um, heading off to Palm Beach Atlantic to play golf. Mary Ann Johnson. She's joined by her dad tonight. Um, heading also to Shelton State to play golf. We've got uh, Peyton Merriman and her and family. Peyton, Peyton, are you here? Okay. Oh no. Okay. Well, we thank Peyton anyway. Oh, congratulate her. Uh, also joining us tonight, we've already met uh, Bree Horn. She was our Spirit Award winner. And Luke Taylor, I'm having trouble reading that. Is that Luke? Did I get that right? Thank you, Luke. Let's hear for the Eagles. All right, we're, almost, we're getting through this, guys. We've got a few big ones left here. we got Freeport Bulldogs. Freeport, let's hear it. Freeport. Georgia Jones, Spirit Award winner we just met. And then uh, Uriah Fritz. Mariah's got a football scholarship to Davenport University up in Grand Rapids. Congratulations, Mariah. Good luck, good luck to you as you make your way up there. So go Bulldogs. All right. Let's see you guys. Let's see. Walton, Walton High School. I know we've talked to Laney Kelly already from Walton High School. Go Braves. Navarre High School. How about the Navarre Raiders? Are they in the house tonight? Now, if you want to recognize Renee Harris Tolliver, our Spirit Award winner, <laughs> Caitlin Stan, Female Scholastic Award winner, which we'll see tomorrow night, Jacob Herrera, our nominee for the Male Scholastic Award winner. By the way, Caitlin, I got you down as a biomedical engineer uh, major. Congratulations, uh, and uh, Jacob. And the UCF for Mechanical Engineering. So congratulations to you as well. Thank you. Uh, I don't, I'm going to go back to Renee, our Spirit Award winner. I've got to know that she's heading to North Florida, University of North Florida for Kinesiology. So congratulations to all of you and good luck. I've got... Okay, uh, so did I miss anybody from the ball? I think we're good. Go Raiders. So uh, last but not least is uh, Choctaw High School. I know we got Indians in here. So I got a long list of, of representatives here. I'm going to call your name. As I call your name, uh, we'll hold, hold the applause here. Uh, Coach Andy Thickman joined us tonight. A chance to meet Andy. Coach Kerry 
Freak or Freak? The head sure goes. Gary? Stand up. Stand up. Uh, Lavani Sanford. Did I get that right? Lavani. Giovanni. Giovanni. Uh, Caleb Hollins. Caleb. Uh, ben R. Taylor. Our Taylor Hagen Award winner, uh, trophy winner, Chi Medina. Medina? Medina. So uh, I'm going to jump back here for, for uh, the Sanford FAMU, head of the FAMU. So good luck to you there. Caleb Hollins at the Flagler College. At Blake, and uh, at Chi, you're the uh, Taylor Award winner. I've got, uh, okay. I'm going to move on. Carrie Ann Hawk Harris. Carrie Ann Harris, stand up. Headed over to Warner University. Morgan Nowell. Birmingham Prep. John Ward. David Petway. Ellsworth Community College. Angelique Patterson was our Spirit Award winner. Angelique. Jacob Muse. Jacob. Stand up, guys. Ryan Smith. And I know I know there's some other coaches in the room. Uh, if you would, I can't I can't make the name out that's handwritten here. But uh, if you got any other coaches from Choctaw, please stand up. Frank Beasley. Okay. Head to the ball, guys. Frank. Go Indians. All right. I want to. Uh, First, I want to give a big round of applause to all the, the, the students we recognize. This is an incredible uh, time in your life, your, your senior year moving on. Uh, by the way, the graduation will happen before you know it. The, the time flies, but uh, congratulations to all of you. There's a lot of people in the room here tonight that I... Okay. Destin... Uh, go, <laughs> I, hold on one second. I'm sorry, I did skip the test in high school. That's on me. Coach, let's come up here and... Um, uh. <laughs> Technical difficulties, guys. Thank you. On behalf of Christian Krupchenk, our principal, and myself, Phil Dorn, I'm the athletic director of Destin High School. I want to introduce uh, Regan Palmer again. She was our uh, female uh, sports uh, student athlete nominee to all sports. Carson Phillips, baseball and football player for us, our male nominee, and his father. Who would stand up? And also, uh, we have Drew Palmer, Jody Palmer, Riley. Uh, family here with Reagan tonight, so uh, honor them. Thank you. Thank you for Destin High School. My apologies. So uh, tonight, there's a few people that we didn't recognize, but there's a, you know, our school board members, our superintendent Hughes, superintendent Chambers, Cindy Gates is here tonight. I know there's a lot of people that have contributed to the success of a lot of these folks, so these students. So thanks to the parents, thanks to the teachers, the coaches for inspiring all the things you do to get these kids to do things the right way. Um, uh, most, of, most of all, I want to thank all the students. You guys are the reasons we put on this event. Uh, so regardless of whatever school you attend, what side of whichever rivalry you're on, uh, we appreciate your sportsmanship. We appreciate your commitment to what you do. You make us all very, very proud, guys. Thank you. So this is an exciting time for me tonight, important part of the program. Um, we had the idea about three, about three years ago, four years ago, of recognizing some head coaches. We were at a Crestview, uh, meeting up at Crestview, talking to some of the head coaches, and um, you know, a lot of times the assistant coaches at these schools have a lot of interaction with kids and have a profound impact and influence on, on the kids' lives. So uh, we started a new tradition back then. Uh, it's a, uh, it, this is the assistant coach of the year. So I want to thank uh, Don Collins, he's here tonight, uh, one of our members for seeing this through. I'm going to go ahead and ask college football legend and former FSU defensive coordinator, Mickey Andrews, to make his way up. Mickey. Uh, he's made so many outstanding contributions to young men in the in college football. 
So most of you know Coach Andrew served as Bobby Bowden's defensive coordinator for 26 seasons, uh, coaching many guys like Ron Simmons, Derek Brooks, uh, some of the best quarterbacks in the game, Leroy Butler, Terrell Buckley, Deion Sanders. So in 1998, uh, his program was number one in total defense, number one in pass defense. They won two national championships in Coach Bowden, and uh, this is the part that I still have a hard time understanding as a Gator fan. 14 straight top five finishes in college football. That is amazing. <laughs> I mentioned Deion Sanders last year before accepting the head coaching job in Colorado. Uh, Deion Sanders was quoted, uh, most of you know, prime time. He credited uh, many of his coaches for his coaching style, but he added that Mickey Andrews was, quote, the one he is like, he is most like. So uh, I thought that was an incredible tip of the cap. I want to also mention that uh, just just uh, two weeks ago, uh, the reigning two-time national champion, uh, national champion Georgia University of Georgia. We have any Bulldog fans in here? Uh, uh, Kirby Smart was down in Orlando uh, just a couple weeks ago for the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic. Kirby worked underneath uh, Coach Andrew back in 2003 timeframe. And uh, he called Coach Andrew, just this month, he talked to him, the words he used, fiercely passionate, master motivator, most influential coach he's ever worked with. In fact, he said, he's the toughest man and motivator I've ever been around. They would fire me tomorrow if I coached like he did. <laughs> so he did add also, Coach, that he said he also learned a lot about caring and working with you. So uh, Coach Andrew and Bob retired after the 2009 season. Uh, as you many of you know, they were both great men of faith. I don't care who you rooted for, they earned all the respect by everybody. They served as role models for the players, the way they taught men how to succeed on the field and off, and by the way, their faith in Jesus was the only was the core of everything they did. So uh, he was the first one in 1996 to receive the Frank Royals Award, the nation's top assistant coach in college football. So it's not hard to understand why we, the All Sports Association, named our Assistant Coach of the Year Award after one of the best assistant coaches we've ever, ever known. I'm honored to ask him to come up uh, here to present this year's Mickey Andrews Award to the most deserving coach in our local area, Nick Gardner. <laughs> I just want to point, I want to just point out that Coach Gardner is a key member of the athletic department for Walton Beach. He served as assistant volleyball coach for 15 years, assistant softball coach for 13 years. He teaches math, drives the bus for several sports throughout the year, and I uh, keep hearing from everybody that he does not know how to say no. Uh, so uh, athletic director Holly McDaniel said he's a phenomenal coach, a math teacher, quote unquote. Principal Spolsky was here earlier, said, Quote, we know our coaches go the extra mile for our student athletes and this recognition of his dedication to team, school, and community is well earned, quote unquote. So uh, again, please join Coach Andrews and my colleagues in the sports, All Sports Association in this world, uh, well-deserved recognition of a guy that's had such a profound impact on our local youth, Paul Beach's Nick Gardner. Nick. <laughs> like that to anybody that gets a bigger backing than this guy does. Uh, I'd just like to first of all thank the uh, Fort Walton Beach All Sports Association for doing this banquet. <clears throat> I think one of the main things that you can do to encourage kids is, is to acknowledge accomplishments. And uh, every person that got an award is deserving. Not one is more, more important than the one you got. Because you're recognized for your achievements. And one of the things that I always tried to do was impress our players with the fact just receiving the award is not nearly as important as striving to get there. And I really believe it. I enjoyed practices more than I enjoyed the games. Because you had to sit back and just watch what they did. 
And I had a great coach tell me one day, if you want to find out what kind of coach you are, just go turn the film on. See if they're doing if you're what you coached them to do. That might be a good thing for parents to do now as well. And there's so many times we want to clout. But it's not just the achievement, it's the time that required you to get to that point and to receive an award. So anyway, congratulations to each one of you guys. Congratulations, Nick. I appreciate the invitation. I'll keep coming over here as long as y'all keep frying that fish. <laughs>I say there's two legends right there. All right, we reached the point of the program where uh, I'm excited to uh, announce our, our guest speaker tonight. Uh, he, most of you know him, he lives here locally, he's an NFL great. Uh, Jerry Johnson, I'm gonna make his, ask him to make his way up here in just a moment. Uh, he's the only two-time defensive captain for the Alabama Crimson Tide. We got any Tide fans here tonight? I know, I know a few of you. Uh, so Jarrett was a 12-time, a 12-year NFL warrior, a hard hitter. I, I believe uh, Heinz Ward still has that impression on his chest somewhere. Uh, he had nine seasons with Baltimore. Certainly uh, one of the best linebacking cores of ever with uh, Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, and, and this guy Jarrett. Uh, he spent three years with the San Diego Chargers. So a tw his 12-year career, he had 526 tackles. Some hits, some were memorable. I, remember, I still watch the Geno Smith hit. Um, Mickey, how much easier would your job have been had he been on your line? I, I know. <laughs> I figured you guys have crossed, they have crossed paths before. So, uh, Jared was recognized as our All Sports Association's president, a professional award winner back in 2012. He retired from the NFL in 2015. You guys might want to know he was a finalist for the 11th annual NFL the United Service Automobile Association Salute to Service Award they do every year. And so he was a finalist this past year. Last May, even, uh, he, was, he finished a 43-mile run around Choctahatchee Bay as part of the uh, Army 7 Special Forces Group Ultra Marathon. Uh, he plays an attendant this, this year? Yeah. Same thing this year. He works out like a machine, this guy. Uh, he currently spends his time as an owner and operator of the Black Rifle Coffee Company in Niceville. If you haven't been there, go visit it. Uh, chances are he'll be there. He knows his customer service uh, very well, and he'll meet you at the door most of the time. Uh, he's married with a father of two, family lives right here in, the, in our community. I spent some time with him and the words that come to mind, determined, ferocious, generous. I think it's pretty clear why we're so hyped tonight to have our, our, as our guest speaker tonight. Uh, he's an avid fisherman, good friend, Jared Johnson. How y'all doing? Um, it's a little surreal seeing Coach Mickey Andrews here because he recruited me and I just didn't believe I was good enough to play there. And uh, they had a hell of a squad back then, a lot of really good players. So it's a, it's a, it's really, really cool seeing some faces throughout your career. But um, um, so yeah, so my name's Jared Johnson, um, Florida boy. Is born, uh, born at Homestead, Florida, down South Florida. Uh, that's right. Uh, Moved up in Central Florida, where my dad was from. Uh, graduated from a 2A school called Chiefland. Played, was a 2A player, played defensive end and uh, pulling guard. Got, was lucky enough to get a scholarship at the University of Alabama. Spent four years there. I'd say that, that I went to Alabama. It's a totally different Alabama, because people are like, oh man, you went to Alabama, it's been pretty good. But totally different, I was, I was pre-saving Alabama. So, a little volatile when I was there. We, you know, have no rings, I get, you know, got nothing. I got a wedding ring, you know. But, uh, that's all, I get, people always ask me, like, oh, you went to Alabama, how many national championships you win? And I'm like, well, you know. No, but, uh, but yeah, I, I learned a lot when I was in school. And, um, Played for two head coaches, um, you know, and I, I'm, I would say that they prepared me mentally and physically to withstand the pressure of playing in the NFL. Um, so yeah, w went on, um, uh, got drafted in the fourth round to the Baltimore Ravens and uh, spent nine years there, started out as a defensive end, uh, couldn't maintain the weight, you know, the season's really long, it's kind of a skinny fat, white kid, you know, couldn't maintain the weight, so they ended up moving me to outside linebacker, and, uh, and the, it stuck, and I, I could do it. And uh, back in those days, Ray Lewis, I played with Ray for nine years, 
and our job was defend was defend was to defend red. Um, it was a different game now. Everything it's a spread game. Everything's opened up. It's misdirection, slip screens, um, RPO, all that stuff. Back then it was all tilt run. They, were, they had a 260 pound fullback. They had a giant offensive line. This is where we're going. Come get it. Can you stop it? And so we defended that with big physical guys, and and I fit that role. And my job was to defend Ray against pulling guards and um, big giant fullbacks with giant neck rolls. And I loved it. Um, finished my career in San Diego, um, which I didn't want to leave. But once I got there, I developed a friendship with many of my teammates that still exist today. Some of my strongest teammates that I that I that I have that we have a text group that pops off almost every day. Um, and so I'm very very thankful for my career. Um, you know, I wasn't didn't have a ton of stats, um, but I'm very very proud of the the men. Um, that I could, that I was able to play with, whether it be coaches or players, um, multiple Hall of Famers, um, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs, was my uh, my rookie roommate. We we're in training camp. Um, got a chance to play with Deion Sanders, and I, I'm very very proud of the teammates that I got to play with. Um, maybe the man I am today it taught me a lot about myself. My my father passed away um, when I was eight years old. And I can truly say that football raised me because I lost a father, but I was given multiple fathers by the, the coaches in my life and the teammates that still exist today. Um, so when people wear a jersey and they say, oh, I'm a big fan, I'm like, you don't even understand what this game has done for me, um, which I don't say because that's weird. But, um, but it, I, I truly love this game, and I, I would not be the father and the man – I am today um, if I didn't have that experience. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about my story. Um, where are my high school kids at? Raise your hand. I told me I was gonna be, they told me there was going to be a room full of high school. I see a bunch of old people in here. <laughs> but raise them up again. Raise them higher. Y'all didn't raise your hands. All right. Okay. So that's, that's this next part. This is, what, this is what I'm speaking to you. All right. I got three things for you. I know y'all got phones, so pull your phone out. And I'm not a, you know, not an intellect, you know, but I want you to, I want you to jot these down because I think they're important. They're important to me. And they're things that I've learned in my life after football because I thought that football taught me everything. And when I got out, I realized I was an idiot. I've learned more in the, I mean, I've been out eight years, which is crazy because time flies, but I've learned more in the eight years about myself, about society, about my family, about how the world works, and my eight years outside of football. And I say that because I, you know, all the things I learned from ball, and then you apply it to being a, a husband and a father and a business owner and a friend and, and all the things. Um, so I have, I have three things for all the kids in this room that I assume, are we all seniors? No, a few juniors, doesn't matter. We're about to transition out, right? A couple years, you're gonna be on to bigger and better things. Um, so the first thing, find your core value. And you say, what is core values? Core, value, core values is what defines you as a person, not assigned values. You know, you're whatever athlete, you're a football player, you're a basketball player, you're a track athlete. Those are, those are assigned values. Those are things that people say, to you, you're a sprinter, you're fast, you're whatever. What are your core values? When you walk into a locker room or you, you walk into a weight room, you'll see big, bold letters across the side with words, you know, say like, you know, fast, physical, relentless. You know, what are those? Those are core values. Those are the things that they believe about themselves as a group. Those are the words that define them as a group. You go to large corporations on commercials or letterheads or whatever, they're going to say words like honor, excellence, com commitment. All those are core values. Well, I want you to think about while I'm talking about, well, what, what words define you? Who are you as a person? Those words can be positive. I hope they are. But at this stage in your life, when you're young, all of us have negative core values. They can be things like, you know, like for me, my core values that, that I believe in myself, my positive words are integrity, humility, grit, and pride. 
I try to do the best I can no matter what. I try, to be hum- I try to be humble no matter who I'm talking to. Try not to take myself too serious. Try to learn from anybody else no matter what, no matter what line of work because you can always learn from anybody. Grit is very important to me because toughness is temporary. Grit is long withstanding. You can withstand anything and then pride. Be, pride, be proud of where you're from. So those are my positive core values. My ne- I got negative ones too, you know. I get a little pissed off sometimes, you know. Get a little emotional, get a little moody. You know, ask my wife, she'll tell you. One of the things that I've realized as I've transitioned from my football career to getting out, I've realized that society, most people in society possess zero ability to honestly self-evaluate. And I learned this through owning a small business. Um, when, when, when you talk to somebody about the problems of their life, they'll just deflect or deny. You know, they're going to cover up by buying things. They're going to deflect onto other people. They're going to change fruit, uh, friend groups or they're going to move. They're going to take a different job. But they continue the same behavior patterns and ex- expect different results. When I was playing football, this was not an issue because everything was evaluated. They had a camera on you at all times, walkthrough, practices, games. Everything was being filmed. Everything was being evaluated. They put whatever problems, if you made a mistake, they put it in front of your face. Everybody watched it. You got to watch it. You got to watch them watch it. And everybody turned and looked at you and you either fixed it or you moved on. This style of life gave me a sense of ownership in my behavior. Now, it's not perfect. You know, I mean, I make mistakes all the time. But anytime I have an interaction with a person, I'm constantly looking at how could I have done this better. I'm constantly reassessing the values in my life, the values in my life, and how I interact with people. The second thing I want to talk to you about is finding your struggle. Most people would say find happiness, find comfort, comfort. But I believe that we have a comfort and happiness epidemic in this country. Because I don't care if you're rich, poor, whatever, life is tough. Rich person has issues. Poor people have issues. Everybody's issues, everybody has problems. Now, none of them are relatable. You know, a poor man is not going to understand the issues of a rich man and vice versa. But everybody has issues. They say choose the path of, of least, least resistance, and that will make you happy. But I say what gives you, find what gives you purpose and puts joy in your heart. One of my favorite books is by a man named Mark Manson. It's called The Subtle Art. It talks about a man who lived his whole life working endless hours to buy a dream house on the beach so he could spend his days watching sunsets and drinking margaritas. He worked endless hours, and finally at 65 years old, he bought the house and lived on the beach. After a month of sitting on the beach and watching the same sunset, drunk on margaritas, he realized that it's not the house that gave him purpose, but the job and the work that he did to achieve achieve those things. It's not the summit that the mountain climber longs, but the climb that gives him purpose and defines him as a climber. Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls, but I guarantee you if he gave you an honest answer about his life and his career, he would say, he would say that the thing that he valued most was the opportunity to struggle through an unrelenting season with a group of men that he respected to achieve a common goal. If that wasn't true, he would have quit after one Super Bowl. My last thing that I want you guys to jot down is to find your tribe. Find your group. We are meant to be communal people. We're meant to be to interact with others. As I've gotten older, um, you know, I had a lot of crappy friends for a long time. And, you know, a lot of times I just keep them around because they were my friends. And as I've got, as I've got older, you know, I'm 41 now, and as I've gotten older, I've realized that, you know, there's, there's people in your life that negatively affect you. You know, you, what's the old saying? You run with dogs, you get fleas. 
and you're young now and you've got a big group, you've got a lot of friends, you're in high school, you interact with a lot of people, that's great. That's awesome. Interact with everybody. Interact with different people. But as you get older, and everybody, every adult in this room will tell you, as you get older, you have to narrow that group down. And if you have good core values, if you're a good person, if you struggle the same way, and you interact with the same people, you're gonna live a happy life. The last thing I wanna leave you with, one of my teammates who I love, uh, we retired the same year, he played center at uh, San Diego for 11 years. Uh, he retired the same, same year as me. Uh, he's got my favorite analogy, analogy about uh, retiring from the NFL. He said playing in the NFL is like traveling down a road with an obvious destination. The road is tough, but there's signs telling you where to go and where to turn. Tell you when to slow down, when to speed up, what your schedule is, and what you'll need to get to your destination. As long as you don't deviate from that road and run off in the ditch by getting, hard, by getting hurt or getting in trouble, as long as you take care of your body and you stay productive, you can stay on that road a long time. There's comfort in that road, even though it's tough. Retirement, on the other hand, is like traveling through an open field. There's signs everywhere, but they're all pointing in different directions. Every person you talk to has advice on where to go, but they're still in the open field. Until you find purpose and fulfillment in your journey, you will remain in that open field, wandering aimlessly. That's all I got. <laughs> We take a little bit of time and maybe ask Jared a couple questions. I was um, I was intrigued by uh, your your uh, presentation here tonight, and namely because uh, one of the things I read, and I remember going back to like a Sports Illustrated article about 2009, where I read it's like certainly more than half NFL players after they retire like go broke after five within five years of retirement. Now I've looked at uh, Warren Sapp, Terrell Owens. These guys, some of these guys make a hundred million dollars and go broke. And uh, I didn't know uh, from your perspective. I was kind of curious to get your perspective on that. You just talked about all the reasons why this probably hasn't happened. I, I know you a little bit, and I know you're pretty responsible uh, in how you've came out of retirement. But that doesn't happen to everybody. And uh, I mean, I don't. I think for the kids, there's a lot of traps out there, as you said. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll say this, like the, the guys that go broke and blow all their money, they tend to make articles. The guys that are doing well do not. There's just as many guys doing well. Um, phenomenal businesses, um, guys go back to school, guys that are just personal trainers, guys, you know. So I, I will say that there's just as many guys doing great as not. The guys that, that tend to not do as well, um, you know, uh, people like to uh, people like to highlight, you know, the the glamorous stuff. Oh, he's blew all his money on cars and you know whatever. But it's it's usually the guys that are that are going broke um, and making poor decisions are guys that got into a lifestyle and got addicted to a lifestyle um, that they couldn't get out of. It's usually for five reasons. Number one, uh, poor business decisions, divorce, child support. Um, uh, surgeries are a big deal because a lot of you know got a, a lot of guys have multiple surgeries that they're paying for, um, you know. But I would say over, I would say the vast majority are guys, the guys that just that couldn't back away from losing the lifestyle of being an NFL player. Because the fact is, is you're not anymore. Um, you've got to move on. You've got to. You can't go to Vegas, you know, five times a year and blow all your money, you know, at bars and you know, gambling or whatever, but uh, guys that, most of the guys that, that, um, that, that don't do well are trying to maintain a lifestyle that is gone, it's past, you gotta let it go. You gotta find value and purpose somewhere else. Appreciate that. A uh, couple, couple more quick ones. Got to watch you play a little bit, and as offensive line, you lined up on the end of the uh, uh, offense, uh, outside linebacker, you got to line up on the uh, outside of the defensive line often, and, and Part of your job, and I'm not an NFL expert or a defensive expert like you and Mickey, but uh, it looked like your job was to set the wall on the outside. I used to watch all the time uh, how the runner would try to get on the edge and you would turn steer him back in the inside. So did, did Ray Lewis ever chip off part of his paycheck for you for all the tackles that you helped pad his stats with? All right. yeah. How about this? I believe, uh, I want to just ask you, uh, if you would, just explain a little bit about what brought you to Niceville and about, um, I know you're, you're heavily involved 
with our local military veterans and, uh, and uh, talk a little bit about open up the Buck Rifle Cup. Yeah. Co coffee cup. Yeah, so the football question, yeah, that was my job, set the edge. You know, there's, you know, there's, I don't know, what, 15 yards between tackle to tackle, and then outside the tackle there's, I don't know, there's a lot of space. So, you know, if the runner gets outside, it sucks. So you should say <laughs> no edge, no chance. So, yeah, that was my job. But anyways, um, it was also my job to get to the quarterback, which I wasn't very good at. But anyways, um, uh so with my connection to the military, so I moved to Niceville in 2011. Um, it was my, I can't remember, ninth, 10th year in the league, can't remember, whatever. We moved down here, uh, fell in love. My wife's from South, South Alabama, vacation down here. So moved down here, just fell in love with the area and built a house. And so we've been here, I'm going on whatever it's been, 12 years. Um, so I had immediate connection with uh, the military community and, um, you know, what's interesting is, you know, especially my, my buddies that have been in combat and whatever, I mean, so you've, you can go around the world, you can be super successful, you can buy whatever, but, um, and I can say I'm a tough guy because I've played, you know, against the toughest guys in the world, but I have no idea how I'd react if I was in combat. I've never been faced with my own mortality. So uh, I've never like experienced that level of humanity. And so when you talk to people and you interact with people on a regular basis who have, there's a level of respect that you have that you can't buy. I mean, I don't, I don't care where you go. I mean, you can go, you know, all these you know, self-help and whatever, but like you cannot uh, experience or appreciate what what those guys have gone through and, and a lot of them you know a lot of my buddies are really good dudes some are not but some are really good dudes and most are really good dudes but like I just I just find them intriguing I find them inspiring because like I don't find inspiration from a lot of people you know like I just don't I don't find inspiration from a dude at Gold's Gym flexing in the mirror like yeah I don't you know like I look down on you um, but um <laughs> Um, but I do with them. And so I was, I, I, it was hard for me. My biggest thing when I transitioned out of the military, or out of the military, I'm sorry. When I transitioned out of football is like how guys speak to each other, how you interact with people, you know, like how, you know, how you're working out. You know, I, I, I just, I just felt like a lot of the world was just kind of full of, you know, Full of crap, you know. I mean, like, just a lot of social media, a lot of covering stuff up, a lot of deflecting. You know, it's easy for people to act like a certain thing when they weren't. But when I, when I, you know, met when I inter started interacting with the friends that I have now, I just have a ton of respect for them, you know. And then I had the opportunity to um, to buy a black rifle and did it. And it's, I mean, when you want to talk about purpose and fulfillment, I mean, like. I love every day I go in that coffee shop. I love our customers. And we have the best customers, or we have the best employees in in uh, in the Panhandle, my my opinion. And you know, when you talk about something that that fills my cup, I mean, that is my fulfillment. You know, so, so yeah, I think that answers. We'll see if there's any high school students here with a question for Jared tonight before we close up. We got a few, a little bit of time left. Any high school students? Anybody with a question for Jared? Anybody? I'll give us a second. Wow. Okay, Brian. Hey, Eric. What's up? Well, you're gonna put me on the spot, okay? <laughs> My Christian faith. Yeah. So, um, I would grew up in the church. Um, my mom is an absolute saint. Um, you know, I mean. I, I mean, I have always, uh, my, 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 my faith has always been uh, a, <laughs> this is a personal question. <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I mean, my, my faith has always been a changing thing. I don't, I am not a fan of the organized church. You know, but my, my faith is personal and how I grew up. I know how I grew up. And I know what I believe. I believe in grace. I know I'm forgiven. And I know my mom is an absolute saint. But uh, 
I, I mean, yeah, this is a personal question. But yeah, I, I mean, thank you. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Love you, buddy. I'm going to ask you, okay, Chi, you got a question. My type of coffee? Favorite type. Oh, okay, so I'm a black coffee drinker. Every morning I go in, I make a double shot cortado. So it's equal parts, espresso to milk. So four ounces of espresso, four ounces of milk. I love that question. Hey, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you one quick question on the way out here, but uh, uh, out of all the things you've done. Okay, another question. <laughs> I've done it all, man. I've screwed up so much. Yeah. No, I, I, so my, my dad was a commercial fisherman and was a guide in the Keys. My goal was to be, I wanted to live two dreams. I wanted to play in the NFL and I wanted to be um, a fishing guide. And so I took my license the spring of 15 when I retired and became a, a charter boat fisherman. Um, and that, that, that thing they tell you about, like, you know, don't make your hobby your job, like, uh, that's what I did, and I kind of ruined my hobby. Um, but I still, I, I love to fish, you know, um, but doing it for a living was not, was not great. Um, but man, I've done everything. I've done real estate, I've done radio, I traveled with the team for three years. I mean, I, I talk like an idiot, but I was actually a, 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 a color analyst for the Ravens for three years, believe it or not, people. Like, actually was on the radio, but, um, but yeah, so I, tra I traveled with the team and then I was actually taking um, a full-time job to go back and work in the personnel department in um, February of 2020. You remember that year? <laughs> and bought a house and never even went, um, but it ended up being a blessing because um, stayed home and, and uh, I was gonna sell my house here, which would have been a massive mistake, but I've done a little bit of everything. I, I mean, I don't know, yeah, so, but this is the best. So. No. I, well, I do, <laughs> yeah, I do. I, do. Uh, I haven't spoke to him in a while. My, my Ravens teammates, um, it's kind of odd. I have, a, I have a group that we keep up with periodically. Um, but how do you explain this? So we were like, this is going to sound super corny, but like we were like, it was war. Like when we, like with Ray, like that dude was so intense and you match his intensity. Like, we didn't even really like each other that much. We were all so different, but like everything was about ball. And like, we didn't go out to dinner. We didn't like, and we had fun. We had, I had like friends on the team, but when it comes to like Ray and Terrell and Ed Reed and like all those guys, it was like, it was war. Now if I see them, you know, that's, that's my boy, that's my brother, give me a big hug. But like we can go months and months without speaking. It's just not that type of relationship. Um, last time I saw Ray was a couple years ago when I was doing radio. Um, but um, I love that guy, man. It was, you know, it's one of my most prideful thing was just, you know, our locker, our, our desk in the, lock, in the meeting room or right next to each other. And just being able to, you know, talk ball with somebody of, of that magnitude in football history was something that I'm very, very proud for. But yeah. That kind of segues into what I was going to ask you, Jarrett, and that is uh, you had a 12-year career uh, professionally, also in college. Uh, do you have a single moment, a single play, a single game that stands out in your mind? I was kind of curious about that. Oh, uh, overall? Yeah, that you remember. Oh, like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, no, not the hit on GM? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, all those hits are good, but um, I don't know, like one moment. Um, I don't know. I mean, it would – Honestly, it would probably I, – I, I didn't go to a Super Bowl. I played in two AFC championships, and those were really cool. All the playoff games were great. But I think probably um, – I don't know, man. There's so many. I, yeah, but those are plays, you know what I mean? Like, but I would probably say, like, honestly, my favorite game, one of my favorite games of my career, in 2008, they were building Jerry's World, 
and they were closing down the old Cowboys stadium. Well, Jason Garrett was their head coach. He had interviewed for the, jo for the Ravens job the year before. They offered him, he turned it down because he didn't want to coach a bunch of goons. And seriously, um, so we, we, they requested us as their last ever home game in Jerry's world. So, <laughs> so we go there, 2008 was John Harbaugh's uh, uh, first year as a head coach. Um, the whole team was hurt. Like, I mean, I had a, a pulled calf, guys had shoulders, whatever. And we went out there and absolutely thumped that butt. I mean, we smashed them. I forgot how, I, I forgot how many yards we rushed for. And they had, you guys know the Cowboys. I mean, they're alumni. They had all the cheerleader alumni. They had everybody on the sidelines. And we absolutely smashed them and it just defined like who we are as a team we danced on their star it was <laughs> awesome it was one of my favorite games of, of all time well done. All right, well done. Yeah. let's hear it let's hear it for jerry yeah. not bad jerry that was riveting thank you well, in closing tonight, I want to just uh, thank all of our award, uh, all sports members. I want to thank Jared Johnson. I want to thank Mickey Andrews, our award winners tonight. Most importantly, all our high school students that are here tonight. You're the reason that uh, you, you make this community re uh, so proud, guys. I'm, so I want to thank you again for being here. We're humbled at your success. So uh, I'm just asking you that when you leave, especially you seniors, uh, take a servant's heart to your next stage of your life. No matter where you go, uh, just know you've left an impression on all of us. So never compromise your values that you've learned right here in Northwest Florida. Uh, we give thanks to God for many of his incredible blessings. Uh, one of them that I think is, uh, I, I think it's an incredible blessing. We get, get to call this place ho our home. So um, never forget where you came from. Be sure your, valuable, your values, your principles, your faith continue to guide you wherever you go in your next level, uh, to the next level. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. God bless all of you. Chris? We're going to close with a, a closing prayer from Pastor Chris Shinnick. Thank you. Amen. Have you had a good night? Let me say a quick prayer for us as the pastor. I'm okay with organized religion, but only because of grace and forgiveness. Um, some of my best church moments are in Black Rifle, so I understand exactly what he's talking about. Let me just speak a blessing over us. God, thank you so much for the accomplishments in this room. Thank you so much for the, the, the parents that are here supporting, the coaches, the ADs, all the, all the hard work behind the scenes so that these awards could be given out. Thank you for the grit demonstrated in the life of uh, Jarrett Johnson. Thank you just for your blessings on us. You're doing something special uh, in this nation, Lord. Rise up this next generation uh, to honor you and, uh, yeah, live for your glory. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Have a blessed night. Amen.